no further steps should be taken in Switzerland in this matter. For the first time in this, in this memorandum that has been accessed by Republic, we are getting an inside feel about what kind of claims are made by the foreign minister of India at that time, where he's clearly saying, do not continue the probe because we are telling you in Beaufort's case, Indian courts are continuing with that probe. He's also trying to tell the Swiss courts and Switzerland becomes so important because all the beneficiaries had kept the illegal remittance that they got in the Beaufort's case in Switzerland do not continue with the probe. It also goes on in this memorandum to continue saying in case, and there's a warning now to them, in case the Swiss authorities over this aspect of the matter, it will be in gross violation of the mutual assistance in criminal matters. Before I continue with the details of this very shocking memorandum that we have, let's go on to Chitra Subramani, who really broke the entire before scandal. Chitra, you were there at Davos. Take us through what was happening there. Even this particular memorandum that was there earlier also, a clear shocker coming in right now. Yes, um, thanks, Rudim. I mean, look at the level of uh, desperate, uh, you know, the look at how desperate they are. Uh, the biggest fear that the Congress government had was that this was an international case, that, okay, they had managed to manage the Swedes, because now we know of this backroom chat between uh, the, the two former prime ministers, Olof Palme and uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi, but then there was this entire Swiss thing to take care of, because by this time the investigation had opened up in Switzerland. So you have the uh, foreign minister of <coughs> India, uh, Mr. Solanki, who just by chance slips in a memorandum to Hene Felber, who, is the, who was uh, his counterpart at Davos. The problem, the problem is that uh, it's unsigned. Uh, it has no legal yes. status. Uh, uh, Solanki had no business doing this because it's not his job. Solanki had no business, and I repeat, no business in giving it to the foreign minister if they were honest and we now know they were not it should have been sent through the appropriate channels through cbi to the department of uh, to the department of justice and police but no hello let's try to go to davos and try uh, and threaten them to say that this will have gross bilateral uh, bilateral uh, repercussions so there you arm twist the swiss hmm. what happened then was that the the conversation was leaked the note was leaked to me and what I find most interesting in your uh, you know picking it it up now is to show the massive um, the massive uh, cover-up that went on in India because remember I had no access to what was going on in India so somewhere everything in India disappeared mm. hence the call uh, that we have been right. doing the Republic has been doing to open the boxes because you know we ha I mean the boxes are going Absolutely. to contain extremely extremely uh, difficult and strong strong information on what went on behind the scenes absolutely and this is really serious for the first time on Indian television we're getting you that memorandum from from the Congress government remember Madhav Singh Solanki he was the external affairs minister just imagine the external affairs minister seeks a bilateral meeting in Davos or sidelines wants to meet the, the Switzerland foreign minister tells him, go slow on this case. How, how often does this happen? On whose instructions was Madhav Sen Solanki acting? This is extremely serious rhythm. Yes. Just imagine, the CBI has also exactly. told the court that exactly. this is a case that is going on, that Solanki in a one-on-one -on -one meeting gave a misleading memorandum stating that the letter interrogatory had been taken before the Indian courts and requesting the Swiss foreign minister to go slow. Chitra, and this is extremely serious, isn't it, Rhythm? Absolutely. And Chitra, even as you were speaking, you were the only Indian journalist there. In fact, in a statement that has come out from the then foreign minister, the Swiss foreign minister, Rene Felber, he also mentions that you were there, present at Davos at that time. Why this is so shocking is because the Congress cover-up is clearly exposed in total. For the first time on Indian television, we are exposing in 1992, way back in 1992, this secret note by the Congress had tried to cover up the probe. Remember 1990 when the CBI started the probe, they had asked for mutual assistance with Switzerland. When that mutual assistance had started on 1st February 1992, the then foreign minister goes to Switzerland on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum at Davos. He asks for a meeting by, with the then 
Foreign Minister, the Swiss Foreign Minister Rene Felber. In that meeting, there was also the ambassador to Switzerland, that is K. Mangla, Kamla, uh, Mangla Murthy, who was also present at that meeting. However, they were later told to go out at that meeting. In the end, there were only two people left at that meeting. In that very crucial meeting, this memorandum was then handed over to the foreign minister of that time, Rene Felber. It caused a huge embarrassment in India. Mm. It caused a huge, huge uproar. And the question accessing these documents have been covered up for the longest time. No one has really pinpointed why these documents have not been uncovered, why these documents have not been spoken of, why for three decades did it take Republic to come and really speak about this memorandum. Because this memorandum as a whole is shocking. Not only is it telling us that Indian authorities should not continue with the probe, but we are trying to scuttle the Swiss probe in Beaufort's, we are clearly telling them, do not continue with your probe because uh, India is continuing with the probe. Chitra, even at that time when this case was being heard, do you remember what was happening? Did Madhav Singh Solanki really come out with an explanation about the memorandum? Because all we heard is random details were being said about this unsigned note. But point is, no, he took no. a note and handed it to the then foreign minister. How much, how much further away can they distance themselves from this document? You know, what I just learned this morning was your revelation that he asked the, uh, you know, the minders to go out. The minders were asked to go out. I mean, it's not like, you know, we're not discussing, uh, we're not discussing great uh, internal security issues. It's just a courtesy call. The, minute, the, the meeting was flagged as a courtesy call. But then remember, René Felbert is not, is not Anglophone. He's, flank, he's francophone, but he knows the importance of this piece of information that's handed over to him. So point number one, not only is Solanki trying to smear the Swiss foreign office uh, and threaten them, he's smearing the entire bureaucracy and, and the whole foreign office set up. Because I'm pretty sure people knew what was going on, but nobody was willing to talk. Secondly, you hope that the foreign minister, of course, he did his job. He passed it on to the, his counterpart in the Department of Justice and Police, who must have been shocked. I know they were shocked because I was there. They called me and I said, this is not legal. Um, it has to come through the right channels. So your unearthing it on this side uh, is huge, uh, is huge, asking people to go out. I mean, it's, it's very, very big because they are, they were, there was a parallel cover-up track, which the government of India was hoping would in somehow muddy the, 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 the uh, legitimate legal track, which is why I keep coming back saying, open the boxes. Right. Absolutely. And you know, Chitra, the reason why this is so important, because the Congress has been accusing Republic, they have been hitting out at us, saying that you're whipping a dead horse. There is nothing in this case. This was closed way back in 2004. If there is nothing in it, why did the then foreign minister try and stall proceedings? And why was the Swiss angle so important? The money there, accounts were shared, account details were shared way back in 1997. Do you think the Congress had something to be seriously worried about in Switzerland? Yes, yes. Uh, oh, absolutely, yes. Because uh, uh, let us not forget that we don't know the holding patterns. The note that was the the, the, the note of uh, September 1987, which which was leaked, and the stories we did earlier this week, uh, and the threat under which that meeting was held. Remember, both was threatened the Indian Indian saying that uh, if this came out, uh, this truth cannot come out because they, it's predicated on a private conversation between the two prime ministers making a back, back room, uh, back room uh, discussion. Now remember, it has come from that. Why is it important? Because now we, they, did not, they said that we do not want the shareholding patterns of the uh, uh, recipients to be revealed. I believe those documents contain the shareholding patterns. They contain, because the money we, uh, we believe went much further, the bribes are much larger than what uh, is publicly known. So uh, I definitely think that you guys are on, we're on to the right track. Um, the money did not stay in Switzerland. It walked through water, i.e. it traveled around the world. And we need to know where it went. The boxes will tell us where it went further, which is why it is all very nice hunky-dory for the Congress to say, why follow it now? But the story doesn't belong to the Congress anymore. It belongs to India. The prime ministers uh, are prime ministers of a country. 
they're not prime ministers of a family. And the Congress party has simply to understand that we're looking at how the parliament of India was derailed. Right. In fact, Chitra, we also pinpoint something really interesting here. The letters rogatory was sent on 7th Feb 1990 to Switzerland. They asked for details about the illegal remittance that was given in Beaufort's by the governments at that time. When these letters of rogatory were sent by the Narsimha Rao government at that time, there was an investigation that was started by the CBI. Very clearly, two years later, when Madhav Singh Solanki, the then foreign minister, goes to Davos, it's clear 1992 is the time when they're trying to scuttle this probe and that's why they've clearly asked for no steps to be taken on these letters rogatory. This memorandum that we are talking about and we have accessed very clearly shows that they are trying to scuttle the probe. It's not only scuttling the probe that is shocking Chitra, but it's also a warning that's being given to the Swiss authorities. They are being told if you continue acting on this mutual assistance it's treaty, it will be in gross violation of whatever you've done. They're also warning them, do not take any further steps in this accord. The point is simple. Not only